I've had dozens of people ask me what I'm doing studying a computer science degree at the country's top university. Do I just stare at the computer all day? Do I just code for four years and that's it? Well, that may be true for other universities, but it's barely true for UP. Hello, I'm Carlos. I'm in my third year taking my bachelor's degree in computer science at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. I wouldn't say CS and UP is um, hard, but I would say that it's vastly different. If you go into other universities' CS programs, you'd be expected to be a software developer or a web developer, an IT technician, a systems manager, among others. However, if you would go into BSCS in UP, you're more tailored towards academic or research work. Our research areas include networks and distributed systems, computer vision and machine intelligence, computer security, scientific computing, among many others. I see a lot of people take up our CS and they get surprised about the things that they don't expect. Which is why I made this video so that you would know what you're getting into. For this video, I will be using the terms course and subject interchangeably. With that, we call BSCS a degree program. I will discuss most of the subjects I've already taken up, which includes the first half of CS. That way, you would get a sneak peek of what you would expect in UPD BSCS. I hope this video will help you out greatly, especially if you're planning to apply into our degree program. In any case, please enjoy. Most universities take a set of fixed subjects per semester, much like high school. In contrast, UP allows us to choose our own set of subjects per semester. This means we could take whatever subjects we want each semester. In a way, it is a game where you mix and match subjects to fit your preferred schedule. However, each course or degree program's department, like the Department of Computer Science for BSCS, recommends a curriculum checklist that you may want to follow. As you can see, this checklist includes non-core subjects like philosophy, English, social science, among others. Core major subjects are shown with the CS code, which stands for computer science, followed by an index number. Don't let the CS code fool you, however, as a CS course does not mean it's purely a programming course. We will get to this later. In addition to the checklist, the department also prescribes a dependency chart for the major courses. Think of it as a skill tree in some games. For example, CS140 requires the student to complete CS21 and CS32. CS21 requires CS20, and so on and so forth. I will be discussing only the first half of this chart in this video. I group them and split them into two sections. The maths courses, comprised of elementary analysis, discrete mathematics, linear algebra, and numerical methods. And the computer courses, comprised of programming, data structures and algorithms, and my personal favorites, computer systems. Timestamps are in the description below if you would like to skip to some parts. Sample items and projects that I will show later are indirectly based off of actual UP Diliman material. However, I wrote them myself so that I could avoid any plagiarism issues. Let's start off with the maths courses. First is elementary analysis, usually referred to as calculus. Now, the calculus courses are not for BSCS only. They are taken up by most if not all STEM-related degree programs in UP, Geology, Industrial Engineering, and Applied Physics, to name a few. I will show some sample problems on screen that we use as regular exercises in these courses while talking about them. Math 21 provides in-depth lessons regarding limits and continuity, derivatives and differentiation, and integration. The integration section focuses on integration by substitution. Math 22 includes lessons on integration techniques, improper integrals, 
parametric curves, the polar coordinate system, surfaces in three dimensions, vectors and sequences and series. Integration techniques taught here include integration by parts, trigonometric integrals, integration by trigonometric substitution, and the use of partial fractions. The sequences and series section focuses on convergence tests, the power series, and the Taylor and Maclaurin series. The final required course in analysis, MASS 23 focuses on multivariable functions, multivariable integration, and vector calculus. The section on multivariable integration focuses on double integrals and triple integrals in different coordinate systems. These calculus courses are foundational and help us with our problem-solving skills. Things like scientific computing and AI directly build on calculus. We now move on to a more CS-related topic, discrete mathematics. The first discrete math course introduces students to formal logic, basic methods of proof, mathematical induction, set theory, relations and functions, and algebraic mathematical structures. The second discrete math course improves on the first by focusing on combinatorics, graph theory, combinatorial proofs, and probability. Both of these courses involve more proving than rote solving seen in regular maths courses. Discrete mathematics is crucial for algorithms, software development, and cryptography, among many others. Foundational linear algebra for BSCS is taken up in a single course, Math 40. It focuses on basic matrix operations, solving systems of linear equations, eigenvectors, vector spaces, basis and dimension, orthogonality, and linear transformations on finite dimensional vector spaces. The importance of this course is seen later on in scientific computing, AI, and in computer graphics, among others. Outside that, linear algebra is a useful tool in solving many problems involving multiple variables, like those in electrical circuit problems. Numerical methods involve more advanced maths than those in the calculus courses. In fact, you have to finish all of them before being qualified to take these. CS136 and 138 tackle solutions of ordinary and partial differential equations, problems involving vector spaces, approximation, and interpolation. They also discuss computationally more efficient ways of solving linear systems, which build on the earlier linear algebra course. One of the main differences of these courses from the regular math courses is the implementation of the methods through code. These courses are essential for scientific computing. We now move on to the computer part of BSCS. We start with the programming courses. It would come as a surprise, but roughly 90% of my course mates didn't know how to code before going into BSCS. CS11 assumes you have zero knowledge of coding. The course teaches basic programming concepts, starting from conditionals, loops, basic recursion, up to classes and objects. Our batch learned all of this in Python. Here, you face your first programming exams. These exams comprise around 5 to 10 problems that you write a program to solve for. You have to finish these exams in usually under 3 to 4 hours. Our exams use something called an automated judge. This is where a server checks your program automatically. This is the most efficient way of checking compared to hand-checking someone's code. If you have tried sites like Katis or HackerRank, this is basically no different. You will also have larger, more difficult projects done twice in the semester. My batch had to make a game in Python using the said concepts. Here, my submission is a simple memory card game. Improving upon the previous course, CS12 makes us use a lower level language. In our case, C++. The lessons here mostly focus on the use of pointers and references. It also focuses on different problem-solving paradigms such as divide and conquer, recursive backtracking, and dynamic programming. These allow us to solve harder, 
more complex problems. Consequently, the problems for the exams here get significantly harder. The exams still have to be completed in under 3 to 4 hours, which may need some practice to do. With your knowledge in discrete maths and basic programming, you should be able to understand more complex algorithms and data structures. CS32, the first of two courses, it discusses time and space complexity, algorithmic correctness, linear data structures, search and sorting algorithms, and randomized algorithms. The second, CS33, builds upon the first and focuses on tree data structures, graphs, spanning trees, pathfinding algorithms, and maximum flow problems. These courses allow us to solve problems more complex than any before. For example, we are able to solve harder problems like this one that involves spanning trees. Now, we move on to the last cluster of courses, the Computer System Series. They are my personal favorites out of sheer interest in the field. The series starts off by teaching circuits, then computer architecture, to operating systems, and finally capping it off with networks. However, we will not be discussing networks or CS145 as I haven't taken it up myself yet. CS20 focuses on number systems, transistors as gates, circuits, combinational and sequential logic, memory, up to programmable logic devices. All of these topics are foundational and depend on each other. Work here includes solving problems through actual breadboard circuits, up to basic circuit design with hardware definition languages or HDLs. We used System Verilog for our batch. CS21 focuses on computer architecture, microarchitecture, then on to memory and I.O. The computer architecture part builds on the previous course. It teaches how basic logic gates combine to form processors. In addition, it teaches assembly, in our case, MIPS assembly, how it works, and how it relates to all of the concepts before. The microarchitecture part shows the different ways we could implement an architecture and how they can make things more efficient. One of the projects here involves solving mid-level problems using MIPS assembly like solving a Sudoku board, for example. Another involves designing customized processor architecture using System Verilog. CS140 builds upon the computer architecture course by discussing how operating systems work. It focuses on CPU and memory virtualization, concurrency, and persistence. The CPU virtualization part discusses process scheduling. The memory virtualization part discusses segmentation and paging. The concurrency part teaches us how to make multi-threaded programs. Lastly, the persistence part tackles file systems and storage. Most of the work we did for the course involves tinkering with the actual Linux kernel, which is mostly in the C language and x86 assembly. These courses allow us to understand computer systems better, which aren't limited to personal computers and the like. As computer scientists, we should know how systems work, such as those in our phones, consoles, cars, and even smart refrigerators. We should know how to program them and also how to design them. That should wrap up the first two and a half years of CS in UPD. If you're applying and you think that it's too hard or too complicated, please don't lose hope. Most of the stuff I've discussed, you learn through literally hundreds of hours of lectures in the university. Almost everyone who comes into our program barely knows anything. Coding, programming, mathematics, anything. If you think our CS is interesting, please consider applying to our program. A lot of Filipinos don't know about our CS, and it's a fascinating field that everyone's missing out on. But I do hope that you know more about it now after watching this. Have a good one. Cheers.